ساتھ دھاگے ڈالے پر جھڑتی ہوئی حرکت کی فرسٹ ٹرک اسٹارٹ وتھ دی کلاسیفیکیشن اف واٹر ڈائلیکٹ ایز ڈسکسڈ ان دی دی پریویس لیکچرز پرٹیننگ ٹو ہائپر ٹینشن وی نو دیٹ ڈفرنٹ ڈرگس پروڈیوسز واٹر ڈائلیٹیشن بائی ڈفرنٹ میکینزمز like centrally acting sympatholytic drugs and adrenergic neuron blockers they produce its water dilatation by inhibiting the central release of the norepinephrine and ultimately vasa constriction does not take place and water dilatation occurs alpha blockers they block the alpha receptors located into the vascular smooth muscles so alpha receptors are blocked so there is unopposed beta action into the vascular smooth muscle and ultimately it will produce its water dilatation calcium channel blockers they produce water dilatation by inhibiting the calcium entry into vascular smooth muscle and inhibition of vascular contraction ultimately water dilatation ace inhibitor drugs will also produce water dilatation because they drug act by inhibiting angiotensin converting enzyme so an angiotensin converting enzyme is inhibited angiotensin 2 is not produced and angiotensin 2 is one of the vasoconstrictor substance that for vasoconstriction is inhibited and water dilatation is produced but these are the drugs which are producing water dilatation by different other mechanism so they are not classically water dilator classical water dilator are the drugs which are direct acting water dilator drugs this includes arteriolar water dilators that includes hydralazine minoxidil and dioxide and there is mixed arterial and venous dilator which includes sodium nitroprusside and nitrate we will be going to learn in detail about organic nitrates into the lectures of this anjana packages but today we will be focusing on vas arterial water dilator and mixed arterial and venous water dilator first drug is hydralazine or dihydralazine it is classified as direct acting arteriolar dilator if we see the mechanism of action it is a direct acting arterial dilator so by direct action on the arteriolar smooth muscle it produces dilatation it reduces the total peripheral resistance greater reduction in the diastolic by pressure as compared to systolic bp as it has little effect on the vein but because of the dilatation of the arterial system it cause activation of compensatory mechanism so there is reflex compensatory tachycardia increased cardiac output increased renin release is seen and increased aldosterone release and ultimately sodium and water retention is seen and the action is reversed dysproportionate cardiac stimulation because of the norepinephrine release can also be seen causes hyperdynamic state is induced and may precipitate angina and other cardiac coronary artery related problems because it causes increase in the cardiac wash and coronary seal phenomena is also seen with the hydralazine it causes fluid retention and edema formation and tolerance to antihypertensive action is very fast because of the all this compensatory mechanism which means it is a direct acting arterial vasodilator drug it causes falling blood pressure but that is very short lasting because of this compensatory mechanism and this compensatory mechanism can be life threatening or risky for the patient diuretic and beta blockers are produce synergistic action and can help in overcoming this kind of adverse drug reactions to some extent mechanism of direct vasodilatory action is not clearly understood but it is said that it interfere with the calcium release opening of the potassium channel or release of nitrous oxide or cyclic cnc mediated actions are there which occurs at cellular level responsible for the direct vasodilatory action if we see the pharmacokinetic hydralazine can be well absorbed orally but it is having high first pass metabolism it is metabolized by acetylation and with a population has a bimodal distribution for the metabolism of hydralazine low acetylator group which means the people 
those who cannot metabolize hypoglycemic well they are called the slow acetylator and they have more bioavailability and are more prone to development of mucus syndrome which is one of the side effect with the hypoglycemia and there are fast acetylator in which the response would be very much low it is completely metabolized into the liver and plasma half life is around 1 to 2 hours and duration will last for 12 hours because of its persistence into the blood vessel so even if the drug is removed from the plasma the drug is directly attached to the smooth muscle of the blood vessel where it remains for a longer period of time which is responsible for its longer duration of action of around 12 hours dose of hypoglycemia 25 to 50 mg to be given three times a day and available tablets as 25 mg per day adverse effect of hypoglycemia it produces flushing throbbing headache palpitation nasal stuffiness and conjunctival stuffiness as well as dizziness it causes fluid retention and edema and heart failure can be worsened because of the fluid retention it produces precipitation of the angina and myocardial infarction by causing activation of sympathetic reflex sympathetic over activity it produces paresthesia tremor muscle cramps and peripheral neuritis as a side effect mucus erythematosus and rheumatoid arthritis occur when doses more than 100 mg per day used for prolonged periods especially into the women and those with the slow acetylator variety of metabolism so therapeutic uses of hydralazine as discussed earlier it is a drug which can reduce the blood pressure immediately but it is shorter ex- shorter acting drug and having a risk factor so you should be limited it is reserved for moderate to severe hypertension which is not controlled by first line drug it can be combined with beta blockers and diuretics which help in reducing the adverse side reaction it is contraindicated in the patients of ischemic heart disease and older individuals and it is safe during pregnancy larger doses should not be used for long period of time because of the risk of risk side effect next drug is minoxidil it is a powerful vasodilator directly acting arteriodilator drug and causes reduction into the total peripheral resistance which leads to reduction in the diastolic bp with little effect on the vein so systolic bp is reduced less as compared to diastolic bp all other actions are similar to hydralazine it causes reflex compensatory mechanism activation which is stronger than the hydralazine that is why minoxidil is less preferred always have to be used along with diuretic or beta blocker beta blocker will help in reducing the sympathetic overactivity it is a sympatholytic drug diuretic will help in removing the fluid out of the body which is one of the compensatory mechanism as a sodium and water retention so whenever minoxidil is to be given it is always given in combination with diuretics or beta blocker minoxidil is a pro drug which is converted into its active metabolite and it is acting by opening of the atp operated potassium channel and produces vasodilatation it is rarely used only in severe or life threatening hypertension which is not controlled with other drugs adverse drug reactions are all similar to hydralazine but the one important side effect is it can cause excessive hair growth considering this side effect as a potential advantage minoxidil is nowadays used as a drug for hair growth for the treatment of baldness topical 2% of the minoxidil available as ointment and cream for the treatment of baldness where the response is slow but it is effective only till the drug is applied but still it is one of the very well marketed drug for the treatment of hair growth next drug is diazoxyl it is also acts as an arterial dilator it possesses potassium channel activating effect it is used in past for rapid reduction into the blood pressure in hypertensive emergency but current therapeutic uses is given as rapid iv injection for hypertensive emergencies where regulated iv infusion facility like infusion pump and close cardiac monitoring facilities are not available which is essential requirement for nitroprusside and all other emergency antihypertensive drugs next drug is sodium nitroprusside 
it is a mixed arterial and venodilator drug it reduces total peripheral resistance and cardiac output both it reduces the diastolic and systolic both blood pressure it produces little reflex compensatory mechanism activation in comparison with selective arterial dilator and it decreases the cardiac work and does not precipitate angina pectoris it may be useful into chf also by improving the ventricular function and cardiac output by decreasing the aortic impedance that is after load and low arterial ceiling pressure that is pre load mechanism of action endothelial cells and rbcs they will take up the sodium nitroprusside they split the nitroprusside to generate nitrous oxide nitrous oxide is a endothelium derived relaxing factor which relaxes the vascular smooth muscles and produces water dilatation conversion occur both enzymatically and non enzymatically but the enzyme involved are different than that carry out the conversion of nitrous oxide from the glycerol trinitrate non enzymatically it is converted to nitrous oxide and cyanide by glutathione and no tolerance develops with the absence of sodium nitroprusside unlike nitrate nitroprusside acts rapidly within seconds and very brief duration of action is there 40 to 5 minutes so it is always given by iv infusion by dose titration therapeutic uses it is used for emergencies only 50 mg of sodium nitroprusside is diluted into 500 ml of infusion fluid and it is started with the 0.02 mg per minute may be increased to 0.1 to 0.3 mg per minute according to the blood pressure level required decompensate in alkaline ph and on exposure to sunlight so infusion bottle should be covered with a black color paper to produce controlled hypotension in refractory heart failure pump failure rich myocardial infarction and acute mitral regurgitation patients also it is used into the emergency adverse drug reactions of sodium nitroprusside they are mainly because of the vital dilatation and that includes palpitation nervousness vomiting pain in abdomen lactic acidosis by the release of cyanide it is not advisable to use the drug for more than 1 to 2 days because of the risk of excessive cyanide which is converted into thiocyanate in liver and ultimately produces toxicity so this is all about the vasodilators directly acting vasodilators used into the management of hypertension i hope you have understood the topic and if you have any questions you can ask here into the comments